Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I'm here with Drew Knowles, who is the Vice President and Partner of Influence Ecology, which is a global business education company. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, it's lovely to have you. We've also got RJ somewhere down on by our feet as well, yep, don't we? RJ. And RJ, who's visiting with Hermes and Apollos. So we've got the whole gang in here today. Yeah. Um, so, hey, thanks for coming on the podcast. I'm really interested to find a little bit more about yourself first, personally, before we get started. So tell us a little bit about your the things you're most proud of professionally and personally in your life? Um, so from a professional standpoint, a couple of things. I, you know, spent almost a decade of my life working sort of, you know, very long uh, hours and, and very committed to um, delivering a lot of, you know, courses and programs and, and personal coaching sort of uh, training sessions with thousands of people. Um, and it took a lot. It was a lot of training. I sort of made a difference in huge you know amount of people's lives um i wouldn't recommend you know in hindsight now working that long and that hard and it's partly what led me to the sort of uh you know where i am now but you know just really proud of the the sort of amount of time i've spent professionally just making a real contribution a real difference to many people's lives yeah and then the second thing is um back in sort of the middle of 2013 uh when i had a consultancy business that specialized around mental performance and uh, stress with executives and CEOs. I took a bit of a plunge, a um, bit of a risk and uh, sort of shut up my office and Parnell went online with all my uh, coaching and consulting and went to the US for three months. Oh. And the point of going there was to study uh, with one of the co-founders of Influence Ecology, my company I'm now a partner in, yep. um, to really see if uh, the, the kind of philosophy and the methodology and, and what was happening there, because um, I was a client myself at the time, uh, was something that I wanted to and have, you know, be more of uh, the kind of work that I was doing. Okay. And so I went over for three months and studied and worked with uh, one of the co-founders and kind of the rest is history. Uh, and over a couple of years, I ended up getting offered a, a partnership and a role to you know, help grow the company globally and, and deliver the programs and, and now just focus here on sort of New Zealand and Australia. Okay, awesome. So how big is the company globally and how many people have you helped? Um, oh, goodness me. I mean, it started in 2009. Um, I'd say in the, in the thousands probably. I mean, it's very structured, you know, study programs that yep. we do. They're not for everybody. Um but yeah, quite a number of you know business professionals, and then um, we are in about thirteen different countries, and we've got most of our sort of staff are in the US, but we've got uh, faculty members in Australia, here in New Zealand, and and the US, and uh, and then you know we have sort of a lot of webinars and podcasts and all those sorts of things that you know have a bit more of a far reach around the world. So yeah. Sure. So tell me a bit about what it actually is. I mean, influence ecology. It sort of it sounds quite mysterious. What is it all well, about? Easy, easy way to think of it is is like a small university that teaches people to be more influential. Right. And um, why I say that is because uh, all day, every day, you know, as human beings, we're trying to get stuff done. We're trying to meet our needs. We're trying to meet our wants in life. We're trying to get along with other people. And we rely on a lot of help from you know all the people around us to achieve that. And all day we're in these exchanges. You know, mm -hmm. you, you could say transactions is the word we use, not transaction like a bank transaction, but a reciprocal and consequential exchange, you know, with another person to try and influence them to say yes to your invitation, your offer, your request, the judgments and assertions you need to make, the commitments you need to get them to, you know, make. Um, we're always trying to get people's compliance all day long. That's what it is to be human. Yep. And so transactions or transactional competence, what we teach is all about improving your effectiveness, the quality and the effectiveness of all those exchanges that you're in all day long. So becoming more influential isn't like being some sort of Instagram star or we're not talking about that kind of influence, <laughs> no, yeah. but just in general life, the better we are at influencing people in a very ethical way that's considering mutual aims and mutually beneficial sort of transactions, um, you know, the better we get to live our lives. I'm pleased and that so, you said that because I was a bit concerned, you know, that that um, manipulation, the term manipulation came to mind if you're sort of saying about always being influential in transactions, but you're saying about in an ethical way that totally. actually benefits both parties. Yeah, and yeah. The, the word influence, I think, is 
you know, people, some people are like, yeah, I love influence. And some people are like, ooh, it sounds manipulative and yeah. all of that. And there are people out there that do it very unethically or manipulative. Um, I think as kids, we learned to do that well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we really sort of hold strong to, look, don't do it if it's not good for the other person, if it's, you know, not considering how it might benefit them or that it does benefit them. Yep. Um, and if you're going to use certain tactics of influence, you know, things like say scarcity, which is a common one, don't, you know, say something isn't going to be available or isn't going to be as available to have that sort of influence so that someone's like, oh, no, I want it now. And then five minutes later say, oh, no, it's still available. As in, you know, that sort of example where you, you know, maybe you ring up in the TV ad. Yeah, there's only five available. Yeah, yeah, and then, of course, it's available. So that yeah. sort of practice is not, <laughs> it's the opposite of what we want to teach people. So where do you start? I mean, I, I visited your course a couple of days ago and um, I, I was very impressed with the, the way that you approach it. But give me a, a 101 without a visual. What do you do to start thinking about how influential you can be? Um, I think one of the first things that we really have people you know confront and look at is that you're always transacting in other words you're always in a reciprocal and consequential and i mean consequential like not bad as in just there is a consequence to the exchange and so we have people start to look at what is it like to be in a transaction or an exchange with you mm -hmm. you know sometimes it's good yeah <laughs> um, sometimes it's not so great um i know for me personally that there are some ways that I, you know, act and behave or I go about things that um, that's the way I think to do it or that's my natural way to do it. And that, you know, doesn't always work for other people or maybe agitate to other people. So I think where we start, especially in our study, is starting to like pull the rug out a little bit of people's naivety um, or their lack of um, being able to see the cost or the consequence, um, you know, good, the bad, the ugly of being in an exchange with them, being in a transaction. And then we start to then have people look at their, you know, their ecosystems or ecology is the word we use mm -hmm. because our environment is always influencing us. Sometimes the people and the things in our environment are influencing us towards what we want, towards, you know, the aims we have. But often there's what we sort of call conspiracy ecologies that are pulling us away. You know, that classic example of if you're not drinking, for example, yeah. and you go to the pub and some of your good friends even, they're not out to get you but they might be like oh don't worry deborah just have one just glass have one. and it's sort of like yeah. no yep. um and so it's that you know starting to get really aware and conscious of that you are always transacting mm -hmm. and you're always influencing and being influenced um, and so it's just raising that awareness as then we start to teach some real frameworks and models and principles that kind of give you the um the codified way or the sort of decoder ring, so to speak, of how to navigate those exchanges and those transactions a whole lot better. Okay. And so what's the benefit of becoming more influential or understanding that influential cycle and, and how you work with it? Uh, most of the business professionals, you know, we, we work with are often challenged by or struggling with, and I don't like this term, but it's an easy way to get it, you know, work-life balance. Yep we would more say satisfaction across a broad range of areas of life. Yeah. And they may be succeeding with their money or their career might be really great. And you know, they they enjoy the actual say business work they do, but they're stretched with time with the family or they're neglecting their health or they're not considering things like their sort of ongoing education or um, other areas of life uh, being sacrificed. Mm -hmm. And so, when people learn all the frameworks and models and they embody them, which is why we have study programs, not like just weekend courses that are like rah, rah, motivational, because yeah. it takes a while to unravel all the habits and behaviors and sort of ethics people have that aren't serving them and start to build new ones. Mm -hmm. But as they practice very deliberately everything they're learning and they're measuring stuff you know, in our programs, so it's, it's very tangible. The ultimate outcome over time is what we sort of say is more that whole life satisfaction yeah. and satisfaction as you would have learned it that you know one day training we did isn't about this mystical magical you know miraculous life where everything's peaches and roses and you just wake up in the morning and you bounce <laughs> out of bed um you know i'm all for that but yeah. i certainly don't wake up that way and i'm a very enthusiastic person as you are but some mornings i just would rather not even get out of bed <laughs> this is more about looking at 
such a you know number of areas of life we have 15 of them in, in our model and starting to go look i can't have the kind of dreams and you know uh, uh, magic and miracles in every area it can't be utopic mm -hmm. you've got to really look at what would satisfy me what will do you know what would be you know good enough that it's like a, a wholesome great life yep and so another part of the process as you were speaking before is a lot of really accurate thinking mm -hmm. so looking at these different areas and sort of going well what's the kind of health that would satisfy me yeah and you know, the marketplace is telling us all day oh, what we should what we should do and all yep. of that and sometimes it's right sometimes it's not but we try and ground people and really examining really exploring like what would be satisfactory for you so for health for example like health has always been a cornerstone for me it's where i started and wake up in the morning and doing some movement physical activity it's just like brushing my teeth yep. so my health aims are kind of like what kind of things can i do for optimum performance so mm -hmm. you know i'm always got some crazy thing going on like a boxing event that i did years ago an amateur boxing fight in front of a thousand people at langham and yeah i used to do crossfit over a marathon so i have measured like four four thousand nights of sleep and you know i'm full on about my health yeah but that's for optimum performance some people what would satisfy them health is I don't know. Yeah, to play with their grandkids. To play with their grandkids. Not be in pain when they get out of bed in the morning. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You know, doing some exercise or, you know, four times a week and yep. eating a generally healthy diet. Like, that's good for them. Yeah. So it's very different. And same with money, same with career, same with all these other areas. So, so I liken it to a business plan as well, right? Because at the end of the day, same thing happens in business. We have this kind of idea of what business should be like and what success looks like. But success is different for every individual. And it's about building up a very clear picture of what's important for you and your business. And this is what you're saying is around the whole business and life together. What Correct. is what's the plan that we have going for? What does it look like? How do I actually you get there and yes. then you help them to That's right. take that information and, and put a plan in action to absolutely yeah okay and coming from such a background of the sort of personal growth personal development all that sort of really you know wonderful inspiring motivational you know type of methodology which you know i'm a you know self-identified addict of that for many years <laughs> yep but that just getting excited, just getting inspired. And, you know, all the studies I've done around the brain, you know, just flooding your brain with dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin will definitely have you willing and able to take on stuff that you might not have been able to, you know, have that breakthrough. Yeah. But I will often, I've written quite a bit on what I call the excitement trap. We, you know, our well-intended enthusiasm and excitement and inspiration could be a real danger to us because if we don't check that yep. and let the, wonderful happy hormones subside before we make some commitment to this new thing or i'm going to go take on the world and you know that's where a lot of people i think including myself over time we get deflated or we get so inspired by what we think success should be and what it would look like especially in you know, a group of people yep. that then we run out into the world and nothing has changed over that three-day weekend or that sales meeting or whatever it is where we yep. got the inspired. Rah, yep. And so it's, it's not about squashing people's dreams or saying things can't be done, but I just think it's important these days to be pragmatic yeah. and to just watch when you get hooked or hijacked by all that wonderful, happy, you know, excitement, enthusiasm, because when people get um, angry, stressed, you know, agitated, I think Good. we're well taught to just pause, don't mm. let the crop you know the lizard brain press send on that email just wait <laughs> like we're well trained but we're not really well trained and going okay hang on i'm so excited inspired right now like i could do anything like well all right just just chill, chill yeah you know and let it enjoy it but and so you know i think it's i think it's so important to you know for people to like you said really look at what does success look like for you okay. yep and and figure out or help get people to help you figure out what's the very objective pathway mm -hmm. um, and have you got all the resources that you need uh, because all too often we again we you know we, we rush, rush into action yep. and we haven't thought it all through and then it's really you know and I, I went through this like you you get deflated you get sort of um, disappointed and you know at times you feel really down because you're like why isn't it working out for me because you set yourself up to I'm fail such an awesome person <laughs> yeah you know? 
Uh, so I liken it again to the business stuff is at the end of the day, even if you have the most wonderful plan, the most wonderful vision, you've still got to put in the work, right? You've still got to make yeah. sure there is no magic silver bullet that suddenly makes everything fine. So getting clear around what you want, first of all, having the plan to get there, but then taking constant action yes. is the only way you can really achieve success is what I would yeah, say. Yeah. And it sounds so simple. I think one of the important factors that all of our clients at Influence Ecology say mm -hmm. is we do our best to produce what we call a consequential environment. It doesn't mean we're going to be, you know, waving our fingers at you or telling you you're bad, not like that, or, you know, confronting you. It's more about we make sure you're surrounded by sort of structures and things that you're accountable for that you've committed to and that you know if you don't do the work if you don't take the action that you've contracted to do like that's our deal it's our agreement you yep. got to do all this yep. we're going to deliver it and we will remove you from our program or we we know we will sort of give you some warning shots if you're not complying if you're not getting the help you need or you're not receiving it you know we, when we offer it and when people know that there's that kind of both the threat so to speak yep. of you might, you know, sort of not make it, or you might be removed, but also there's that social dynamic of all these other people that are doing it. Um, it really does have that environment mean you don't have to rely on yourself all the time to be so self-determined yeah. and self-motivated. You can actually you produce support. environments around you that almost make it a foregone conclusion that you're going to take that work. Yeah. So do that work and take those actions. And so you know, that deliberate practice does get boring. Yeah. They talked yeah. about that in Atomic Habits, though, as well, as actually creating an environment so that it makes it easy for you. I've had to do it at home. I love yeah. a glass of wine, as you well know, mm. and I have this great big wine fridge in the corner of my lounge, which is the first thing I see when I walk into the lounge. And so what I've actually had to do is actually take out an entire shelf of wine and put in um, fizzy waters so that when I walk in, I actually have the option to pick a fizzy water over a glass it's, of wine. Yeah. And it's amazing what a it's difference a great, that's made. Yeah, it's a very simple example of, I think, how you know, much our environment yeah. does influence us mm -hmm. and creating the, the the right environment and the right things to shape your behavior. And again, coming back to that thing about you saying about success and all the sort of um, you know, push you could say for this, like go for the stars and all that yeah. stuff you hear that we're all indoctrinated into. I think Work from a beach anywhere around the yeah, world and only work four hours a week. That's right. And it, <laughs> and it, it, but it, it doesn't have people sort of think about, well, you could save yourself a lot of time, energy and effort and willpower if you actually stop trying to be... Sorry, we've got a couple of more growls. Hello, dogs. I know you want to be on the podcast. We're but... almost done. <laughs> yeah. um, but, like, there's such a sort of... You, it's, if it's to be, it's up to me. Like, I have to be that person that motivates myself. Mm -hmm. And it's way smarter, in my view, to actually go, no, let's, let me get a whole bunch of people and, you know, the structures that help me um, actually get there and it, it takes a lot of the willpower out of it. And so I just think, um, you know, there's, there's so much um, value in, in the sort of um, environment, not just working on ourselves to be more self-evolved so I can be more, you know, sort of a better person. That's great. Yep. But it's also important to figure out what is the environment that you need around you. And um, there's one other thing I was going to say. Uh, it'll come to me. In a that's okay. I was going to ask you, um, in terms of three little tips we could perhaps give to the listeners that they could actually think about that would get them started on this journey, if you like, what would they be? Good question. Um, Anything one, they could read? Yes, I'm just prompting you. That there's, you know, there's a, something you've come across that's been really great in terms yeah. of like, helping you understand. Well, one, one tip is if you want to really um, change a habit, you could say, or a certain behaviour over time, that it's not one that, say, that you've dealt with before, you've sort of tried and hasn't worked. Um, one of the biggest things is put some consequence into the commitment or the contract that you make. Like, let's say if you and I are like, we're gonna do this new diet, yep. but we know we're a little unreliable or, you know, if we're together, we'll get into cahoots. Yep. You know, we might sort of go, okay, cool. Before we commit to this, if you don't you know, do the actions or whatever, over you know if you miss two days or you know something yep then you don't get to buy any shoes for six <gasps> months all right i think that well <laughs> yeah. you know? and i don't get to you know go paddleboarding for six months like yep and now 
like there's a commitment there, like there is no way i'm not going to do that work and take that action because there's no way i'm going to have that consequence get enacted so that's one tip um where a lot of people they're just not they're not willing to yep so it's not a strong commitment mm -hmm. so that's one um the other one is, is be really mindful and careful of what you accept what you say yes to um a lot of people i think they they feel like if they say yes if they you know um get opportunities and they're like i should say yes i should you know take this on and maybe they'll become over committed mm -hmm. or they may not be fit for it but they're like oh, I, sh I, I should so they do and they they may not do the best job our identity or our sort of value in the marketplace gets built as much by what we're willing to decline mm -hmm as it does by what we're willing to accept. So practicing declining things regularly and with, you know, a real sort of finesse and grace and even stating, you know, I'm, I have to say, no, I'm declining because of X, Y, Z, so that then someone's like, ah, oh, yeah. they're not going to do this because they've got a commitment to this, their, you know, wife or husband or yep. this. And so it starts to build your identity through the things that you're declining. Um, and then third tip recognize that you know as business owners i think there's a lot of people listening who are business owners yep. that you don't have to do it all or learn it all at times you need to wear all the hats but figure out based on your like personality type your dominant behavioral style sort of the the value that you bring figure out what are the things you are most useful for like the best use of you yeah and like double down on that you know if your behavior like mine is really personal like relational and about people you know, figure out how to do more of that and then get other people around you who who have the other roles or play the other sort of roles way better than you yeah we call um, it delegate and elevate that's right yeah and that's it's all right. about doing the stuff that you really love and are really good at um and delegating the rest to other people yeah Okay, puppies, we're almost coming to the end now here. <laughs> okay, so um, Drew, how do people find out more if they want to find out more about the program, if they want to perhaps get a bit of a taster for it, if they'd like to have a chat to you, how would they do that? Um, just go on to our website. It's probably the easiest. Yep. Um, Influenceecology.com. Uh, and in saying that, in about a month, it's about to completely change. Stop uh, that. Stop but, that. No, no, let's go back because we're not, no, this won't go out for a month. So don't worry. It'll be your, oh, your okay, be live. Cool. So that's what I So, so uh, I'll say it then. Uh, yeah, say it. Uh, Guys, so, I'm going to let them out. Go out there and annoy those people. Thank you. Uh, what's so right. funny is we probably should have said from influential you. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, oh, okay. July 7th. Our whole but if you go to Influence Ecology, yeah. we'll, we'll redirect re re that way. Okay. Yeah. So, Jordan, we're starting again now from there. So, um, Tell me, Drew, so if people have been interested in what they've heard and they'd like to find out more, what's the best way they can do that? Do we have a, a taster? Do we have somewhere they can find out information? How do they contact you? Absolutely. So just go to our uh, website, influentialu.com, yeah. and that's our you know, sort of new brand that's just been launched um, for, our, for our company. And there's a load of resources. There's all the different sort of trainings and things that you can um, find there. Is there or a quiz? Just, uh there's probably going to be all sorts of things like that excellent yep. um or just go to my linkedin page yep. uh, so that's drew knowles yep. ecology yeah fantastic well look thank you so much for your time this afternoon really pleasure to have you on here we'll look forward to hearing more from you thank you so much for having me here really appreciate it thanks drew